Well, good morning there, friendship friends, or good day, or whenever you're watching this, I hope you're doing okay. You know what this is? Some would call this a pout, or a frown. You know, when I was little and I would not get my way as a little boy, and I would pout and stick my lip out, my mom told me that if I stuck my lip out like that, it might stay that way, or there may be a bird that would come and land on my lip. Did you ever hear someone say that? Sort of funny, but yet it makes um, some sense that we don't want our faces to be stuck in a pout or a frown, do we? Like that, no. Um, but I want to acknowledge that um, we have times where we are sad. And we have times where we pout a bit because things just aren't going the way we thought they should or the way that we had planned. So today... On my box, in my desk, I have a box of tissues here that are reminding me of some of the things that we may be sad about um, or that we lament. You know, there's a word that's used, the word lament is used to signify that we have grief in our lives, that we have things that we're sad about. And in the Bible, there's times where people lamented or they named the things that they were sad about. There's even a book in the Bible called Lamentations. And it is a book that was written to help guide people through a time of grief and sorrow and loss. And the prophet Jeremiah is writing this as he's pouring his heart out to God. Um, and he's crying for some things that have been lost in his life as well as in the nation of Israel's life. So it's helpful to name the things that we are sad about, the things that we grieve about, the things that we feel we've lost. And some of those things are things that we've been talking about. Um, what do you miss in these last months of having to stay at your house and not being able to go out and about? Well, we've talked about how we miss work. Yeah, we've talked about how we miss um, social activities, fun times, activity nights, getting together to go to a ball game or to our worship service. Um, we're missing eating out, going places, going to restaurants. We're missing going to church on Sunday mornings. We are missing seeing our families, our friends, and some people are even missing getting their hair cut. Well, we've all had to make adjustments to where we go and who we see, and we are feeling a bit sad about that, and that's okay to feel that way. I want to tell you that I am sorry that many of you are not able to go to work. I am. And I am sorry that all of us are missing activity night and socials. I am. And I am sorry that we're not able to go to church buildings on Sundays. And I am sorry that we're not able to see our families like we used to. And I am sorry that I do not have answers for you when you ask me when this flu will go away and when we can do all the things that we are missing. I do not have the answers for that, but I am sorry. Now, some of us have struggled, and I've seen some of you use your tissues and cry a bit. And that's okay. I'm glad to do that. But I'm also glad that when we can roll up these tissues and throw them away. Because I've seen many of you work really hard to adjust to this new lifestyle that has been asked of us. And I want you to continue to do that well. Um, you know, in the Bible, in the book I use here, the book of Psalms, uh, many of the Psalms uh, write about crying and sadness um, and hard times in life. And the writers lament to God, how long, Lord, will you allow this to happen? When, oh God, will this change? And they cry out to God. And oftentimes, most of the time, at the end of the Psalm that might be written during a sad time, um, there's a word that comes out. And it is a word of praise to God saying, thank you, Lord, for your love for us. We know that you are faithful and that keeps us going. Psalm 30 verse 5 is an example of that. It says, his anger, God's anger only lasts for a moment, but his favor lasts for the whole person's life. Weeping can stay for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I like that. I like joy in the morning. Psalm 30 verses 11 and 12. You turn my loud crying, my weeping, my tissues into dancing. You removed my clothes of sadness and you dressed me with joy, so my heart will sing your praises. 
I can't keep silent. Oh, Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. You know, I value the times that we're talking about the things that make us sad. We can't do away with that. It's part of our heart's cry. We miss those things. However, I am delighted when I am hearing you say, but we are thankful, but we praise you, God. We will do this. We will do that. We will have a good day. We may use our box of tissues for a little bit, but we're going to set them aside. Those are good things to do. I like this. Though the sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes in the morning. We need to keep looking ahead. We may be finding new ways to do things, but we will continue to find ways to do them together. And we will have joy, and we will have God with us. And we're, you know what? We're going to turn those upside down frowns into smiles. That's right. We're going to take that frown and turn it upside down into smiles. And so that is my wish for you today, that even though we may be sad for an hour of the day, you have 23 other hours to be joyful, except for when you're sleeping. And then you can even be joyful too. So as you go through difficult days, remember that joy comes in the morning. God is there to help each one of us. He loves us and he cares for us. So I wish you joy and I'm telling you to turn that frown upside down. Have a smiley day.